So the word fat is a word that describes a physical state of being. It's not a feeling. And maybe unpack why, if you were feeling bad about yourself, your first word to describe that is feeling fat. You can feel bloated, you can feel ugly, you can feel uncomfortable. But your feelings about yourself do not change the way that your physical body exists. If I... It, I love Victoria, but sometimes I listen to Victoria and I think, I think she's smart, but then she says very, very dumb, stupid stuff, and then I immediately take it back. I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt in thinking that the, most people are pretty intelligent and most people want the best outcome for humanity and most people think the same like lines, just usually the sensitivities are a little bit different, but for Victoria, she goes very far and it seems like she doesn't really understand that her her way of thinking is very extreme. Now, I do understand in the sense of like, if you are fat, it is a state of being, like it's a descriptive term, um, and it's not actually a feeling, but nobody looks at it like that. Like, I'm sure it, it'd be like the same thing if somebody said like, I feel sexy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, obviously it's a state of being is to be sexy, but you can still feel sexy in the same way that you can still feel fat in the same way like, oh, I just ate like, I don't know, four servings of ice cream. I feel fat because you know that when people are fat, that's usually big backed behavior that people do in order to become fat. So I do get it, but it's almost kind of like when people go, oh, I'm not homophobic because I, I'm not scared of gay people. Like nobody uses it like that. Like nobody, like it seems very forced and like attacking people in this particular way or like trying to emphasize this. It's just, it's just too easy. You know, like, what are you talking about, dude? Nobody, I, of course, nobody's scared of gay people, but you know what I meant. And like, I'm sick of people trying to use words in a way that nobody else uses them to make it seem like we are the wrong ones when in reality, nobody uses it like that. Use the general terminology, dude. You're just doing it on purpose to like get points. I feel thin doesn't mean I become Mariah Carey skinny. Yeah, but that's not the fucking point. The point is that if you feel fat, you're doing something in order to, you're doing something that would be seen as a fat-like behavior. In the same way that somebody said, I feel thin, that's probably because they they look good in a thin, a thin dress or a, a nice contoured suit or something, something along the lines, or maybe they just didn't eat as much as they used to, or, you know, there's a whole bunch of ways that somebody could feel thin, right? Like, it's just, the way these people describe it is just so, so, so incredibly forced. Like, I understand you guys want points, but this is a bad way of getting it. And then I, I hate this too. Like, I don't know, language matters. Of course, language matters. And the fact that you're choosing to hook onto this one thing shows me a lot, dude. Like, you really don't have much to talk about if this is really where you're going. My feelings don't change the way that my physical body looks. I understand having negative feelings about your body. I think it's important to find language that actually explains what you're feeling. I think it's a pretty good terminology to say I feel fat when you're talking about something that you did that would be big backed behavior like that's fine I it's completely okay to do that in the same way that for instance if you just suck the dude off and then like when you pull back and go oh like you know you feel sexy or you feel like you did something nasty like I feel nasty even though you are not nasty you feel like you are nasty it's okay to use these terminologies in words I, it just seems like there could be so many other things that Victoria and other people can hook on that would further their goals and they just attack like the smallest things to make like any of their points stand or have any type of value at all and like i said i understand it i get it but it's a stupid point instead of relying on words like fat to describe something that is inaccurate because again fat is not a feeling it's literally just a descriptor of size so by now we've all seen the video of the girl talking about how not everybody needs to wear crop tops not everybody has the physique for it and how we i agree with this bro too many people, I feel like, can do certain things, but other people cannot. And I know a lot of people have this, like, idea that everything is for everybody. And I think that is true to a certain degree. Like, for instance, I know a lot of black people dislike it when white people wear dreads. But you can't lie to me. Some white people look good with dreads, right? Some white people look good with cornrows. And there are certain outfits that look okay on certain people, but on other people... It just doesn't look that good. Like, for instance, if I walked outside in my bra and panties, a lot of people would look at me differently and they would see me as a weird dude if I did that. But if you did it or somebody else did it, it might be okay. Like, the point I'm making is certain people can do certain things and that's okay. And it's not even directly to the, the extent of dressing, right? I mean, that's a very that's a very obvious thing. Like, mo like if you're like a 450 pound dude and you're walking around and you're wearing like crop tops and jeans and shit like that with holes in it, it's obviously not going to be presentable compared to a person that's, you know, normal average size. So like, I understand it. 
I get it. But if we're talking about something like, for instance, some people may not be able to do like customer service, right? I know that when I worked in customer service, there was this woman that I worked with, right? And she had to have been 32, 34 at the time. And I was about 21, 22, 23. Um, she had a total mental breakdown after the first day because all these interactions with people, it was like very overwhelming for her. Her social battery died very, very quickly. For me, I don't have like a really, I have a very high social battery so I can like 100% like, you know, assist multiple people simultaneously and it would be like no work for me. But for her, she died out instantly and like ran out of the, ran out of the store and like went on the pavement and started crying for 45 minutes. Obviously she was fired, but you know, the point I'm making is like, Certain people can do certain things. And just because you can't do something like somebody else can, that's all right. Like there are people that can play basketball and I can't. I mean, I'm sure I can play basketball, but like certain people just can't. I, certain people can pay it, play it better, way better than me. Certain people are better drivers. Certain people are better this. Some people are that, that. But it's okay because maybe you're good at something that other people aren't good at either. Like that's all right. Just find out what you're really good at and just emphasize that a lot. That's all it is. So yes, it's, it's very like, it might be jarring for a lot of people to realize that they may not be able to wear crop tops compared to another group of people, but so what, dude? Like, do you see me complaining that I'm not wearing crop tops? I guess you, you might be saying, like, David, you're a guy, so it's different, I guess. But even still, like, there are a lot of things that I would love to wear, like, for instance, like, wife beaters with my biceps coming out and shit like that, but I just don't look good in wife beaters. I just look like, I don't even know, dude. I just, I just look really, really weird, non-Mexican white dude. But anyway y'all need to dress flattering for our figure i agree but sometimes people go far like for instance if you look at the styles of 20 i would say from 20 2000 to 2010 they were terrible like really disgusting guys were wearing like you know these very very oversized pieces of clothing or they were wearing track suits that just didn't make any sense they were very neon blue or green or whatever the fuck or sometimes even red they didn't look good at all even nowadays, like everybody's wearing Crocs, everybody's wearing holes with uh, pants with holes in them. It's just like, you know, we have these different eras of clothing and sometimes it's just like really weird to see. But certain people, again, can wear certain things. I, th I do think that people should be dressing to match their figure. Like for me, I wear only clothes that are really small unless I just don't care. Like if you saw me today, I was just wearing like some white sweatpants with a whole bunch of stains on them because I, I wasn't going anywhere. I don't really care for the most part. How I, how, how I present to other people. Like, I know what I bring to the table. I know how I present for the most part. And I, I can probably dress to accentuate myself as much as I want to. But, like, most of the time, I just don't really care. But definitely, you should be trying to accentuate your figure. If you're fat, there are ways to make yourself way more attractive. That's a factual statement. Like, when I see fat people walking outside with very, very tight-fitting clothes, I always think, like, one of two things. How, how long did it take you to get those pants on? And then two is, like, how much are you sweating in those pants? That's what I'm always thinking. But it's very, very um, unflattering or like phys it makes me physically ill to see very, very overweight people that are like very big and then wearing very tight fitting clothes because it's like, oh my God, I can see like literally every single inch of your body. I can see the camel toe under your armpit. That's an issue, right? It's not a good look to be looking like that. And you know what? I could not agree. Now we all need to dress flattering for our figure. And you know what? I could not agree more honestly. I mean, we obviously need- Dude. <laughs> good job. Good job. I wouldn't consider this to be a crop top. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't consider this to be a crop top, but it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, Sure. I mean, where'd you buy this, dude? Would you go to the kids section? Why is it so goddamn tight? Where'd you buy this? What is this? What size is this? Aren't crop tops, look, aren't crop tops supposed to be made for you in that size? And they're supposed to have a little like drift to them, right? Am I wrong? This is just, this just looks like a really, really tight fitting shirt, like a really tight fitting shirt. And I guess maybe I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't wear crop tops, but this is like, this is uncalled for. This is uncalled for behavior, dude. You're not really proving a point either. Like, you don't look good in this. I'm going to keep it a buck. It's fine that you want to wear it. It's okay. I, You know, I like the Quicksilver haircut you got. But the, the, the outfit itself, it's not giving. It, it's just not. It's not it, sis. You're not doing any favors for yourself. You should be wearing things that accentuate your body. This is not it. And you know what? I could not agree more honestly. I mean, we obviously need to leave the crop tops to the big girls, uh, girls who actually- It's just like two, like the, your legs are so small in comparison. It, it's like if you were making, 
you guys, you guys ever see like Ark Survival characters, like Ark Survival Evolved characters, or um, Ark Sur Ark Survival Ascended characters, where sometimes like you'll make your character really, really big on the top, but then you <laughs> you'll forget about the legs, and they'll be very, very small little like fucking small little tiny legs. That's what I'm getting from this. Like you just kind of click randomize on your character. Like it's fine. You know me personally. I know that my body's a little bit weirdly shapened. I, you know, I, I get it. We all have things and features about our bodies that we don't like or appreciate. But, uh, dude, your legs just, for some reason, they just don't match the rest of your body. Like, I feel like those are legs from another person. They have bellies to show off. So if, if you got to use bellies, plural, that's crazy. If you don't have a belly, you probably should wear a crop top. You need to take a seat and focus on what full ladders your figure. Leave the crop tops to the big girls. True. Thanks. Leave the crop tops to the big girls. What are we thinking about the crop top? Leave it down below. Leave it down below in the comment section. I would love to see what you guys think about it. What do we think about the fit in total, dude? I mean, she killed it, right? She obviously, she obviously killed it. Um, High waisted, and I still see the belly button. It's great. It's beautiful. It's amazing. She killed it. She's beautiful. Thank you so much. Obviously, satire here. I absolutely think you should wear whatever you want, no matter what. You should wear. Okay, look. I'm not going to say that either. I think that you should wear whatever you want within the limitations of your government or society because certain things are going to be permitted and other things are not. So I'm not going to say that. But you should wear whatever you want within the limitations, right? And I think it's really important, though, to acknowledge that not everything's going to look good on you. Not everything is going to be presentable on you. And that's all right. Like I said earlier, if I walked outside in my bra and panties, people would look at me and they'd go, what the fuck is going on with that guy? Why is his meat dragging three feet behind him? But if you did it, it might be okay. So if you want to wear whatever you want, that's fine. Just don't expect other people to, to treat you the same way they would treat another person wearing that same outfit. Like you, you can wear whatever you want, but don't expect other people to like treat you fairly or whatever. What size or shape your body is. I uh, just wanted to help. Like, it'd be like me walking outside like Mel Gibson from Braveheart. Like I, every, every dude wants to do that. Like every guy has seen that movie and thought, this is so awesome. This is so great. Or maybe you want to dress up like as a Roman Centurion from, you know, Russell Crowe's Gladiator, right? Or Ridley Scott's Gladiator. Like, everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to dress up as like, every dude wants to dress up as the Mandalorian, right? Every guy, every guy. Not me though, because I want to dress up as Django Fett, the OG. You already know. But the point I'm making is you can wear whatever you want, but certain things are just going to look fucking weird. Right? You understand? Like, in, in, in different contexts, too. Like, if I showed up and I dressed like Django, dressed like Django Fett, and I was just going to a strip mall, people would think I'm weird. But if I wore that same outfit at Comic-Con, nobody would even bat an eye. They'd go, wow, that's a cool outfit. You understand? Like, certain things are more presentable on certain people and depending on where they are. Like, I'll give you another example. I knew that Comic-Con's, like, really big, right? And people want to dress up whatever they, whatever they want to dress up as. There's a character in Star Wars called Asajj Ventress. And Asajj Ventress is, like, a 110-pound girl, right? Cool character, great character, love her character, right? Um, I was watching some videos of people dressing up as, like, certain Star Wars characters because I'm a fucking nerd and I love Star Wars. But I saw this dude dress up as Count Dooku, one of my favorite characters, R.I.P. Christopher, uh, Sir Christopher Lee. Um, and... Uh, what's his name? Um, General Grievous, and then Asajj Ventress also, right? Great, great, great. But then I saw Asajj Ventress, and it was like a woman that weighed 300 pounds. And it just did no justice to the character. Like, I almost couldn't believe that somebody at that size would dress up as Asajj Ventress. Like, you can do it, but people are going to look at that and go, Oh my god, damn! Like, you could have dressed up as any other character, and I get it. Maybe Asajj Ventress is like your favorite character or whatever. But you may not be able to execute. It'd be like me looking at a character like, oh yeah, my favorite character is like the black, I don't know, dude, like what's a cool, bla like Black Panther, like Chadwick Boseman. I can't, I can't dress up like him. I just can't. It would not be culturally accepted. So I don't, you know, it's like the point I'm making is like sometimes it's okay and other times it's not. I have a little fun with that because I uh, am going nuts with how thinness is coming back in as a trend. I hate the word flattering. It's made up. Can you imagine how terrible, like really think about this statement she just said. It really sucks that thinness is coming back as a trend. What kind of fucking projection is that, dude? You're fucking... You're, what the fuck, dude? What kind of serious copium are you smoking on to make it... To, to, to even say that statement? Like, it's it sucks now that thin, thinness is coming up. I'm sorry that people want to get in shape. I'm sorry that people want to accentuate their form. I'm sorry that people want to become healthier. And I'm sorry that you find that so incredibly jarring. Up And it's ridiculous that people think they need to dictate what other people wear. 
just do what you want with your body. Sure, do whatever you want with your body, unless you live in the Middle East or, like, <laughs> some other parts of Asia. Like, do whatever you want, dude. You know, you have, you have privileges in the West. Go ahead and wear whatever you want. But like I said, don't expect other people to go, wow, you go, girl. You know, even though you weigh 450 and those leggings are ripping in the back, you know, hey, you know what? You look good. No, don't expect that. Your body's amazing and wonderful. Thanks. And um, mind your own business. That's... You know what I love about people saying mind their own business? It's always so interesting to me when I see people say mind their own business in certain contexts. Like if I'm doing my own thing and somebody comes up to me and asks me my stuff, like, hey, dude, mind your own fucking business, obviously, right? Or if I'm doing my own thing, mind your own business. But if you're posting content on the internet and you're telling people to mind their own business, really, that's an interest. So you can say, so hold up. So you can tell me your opinion on something and you're valid in making that opinion known. But when I want to make my opinion known, it's a mind your own business. It's really hypocritical. I don't know how these people can say all these fucking words and make it seem like they're so incredibly like informed on topics like, oh yeah, I'm going to say all this stuff is going to be so great. But then say something incredibly stupid. Like everything she said was okay. Like it's fine to think all that stuff. Obviously I disagree with all of it, but most of it's like okay to say baseline. But then hit it with a mind your own business is crazy because no, you said what you want to say. And now I'm going to say what I want to say. Mind your own business, right? Like you see how fucking stupid that is. Hi, it's Kelly, your fat positive therapist. And we're going to do a quick 101 on why individual liberation is connected to collective liberation. Um, so a lot of times we're attracted to any type of self-help work because we want to feel better about ourselves. We want to raise our self-esteem. Um, we want to feel more empowered. We want to you know, make our environment better. We come from a very individualistic society. So we're taught that the only way to do that is through our own willpower, making a plan, yada, yada, yada. So we gather all of our resources. And the more we learn, the more we start to realize that our environment is directly set up to go against the goal of you liking yourself. It just depends on what you mean by your goal of liking yourself. Like if you live in an area where there isn't a gym and you want to work out, that's obviously going to be something that's working against you. But there are other things that you could do to raise your self-esteem or raise your self-worth or certain things like that. But I do understand what she's saying. Like for instance, if you grow up in a single family household or you're lacking a father or a mother or you grew up in the hood or something like that on public housing, then probably you're going to grow up with different values compared to somebody else that had those other things that I just listed. And it's very tragic in a lot of cases, because I've said this before, but a lot of somebody's value is determined by things that they have no control over, such as having parents that like really instill good values in you, or in a lot of cases like this, having parents that actually tell you about nutrition and such, so on and so, so forth. So like these things are very, very important that a lot of people just don't have the privilege of getting, even though for a lot of people, it's just default stuff. So I do agree that in certain settings, in certain like time frames and stuff like that, you will not have the options. And because of that, you may have like set your life up for failure, like to a certain degree. Um, you know, my life could have been over off of like one bad decision, right? Like maybe your life was going off in one direction, but you made like a, a major turn somewhere and then you made the right decisions, right? Like, you know, everybody can relate to that. There are a ton of people that I know that grew up in these very, very bad areas, but they managed to turn them around and do other things and get out of those things. But it's very easy for a lot of people to just continue to live the same life that their parents lived or people around them live, even if it's a very bad life. Like there's a high probability of you going to jail or you selling drugs or you doing terrible, disgusting things. Like I get it. So yes, that is true. Um, I agree, but to a certain degree, it just depends on what your values are. Environment is directly set up to go against the goal of you liking yourself because the environment makes a lot of money off okay. of that's not exactly what I thought, but the money, I mean, I, I, I'm always willing to listen to how these people think about this stuff. I'm pretty sure that I'm correct in the way that I'm thinking about it. She might be thinking about it in the way of like capitalism, therefore you're capitalistic and that's going to incentivize people for you to stay thinner and then you're fat. So therefore, if you're fat, you're going to feel bad, but capitalism is incentivizing people, incentivizing people to be thinner and you have to work within the boundaries of a capitalistic society because technically that's the only society that we work under. So it's incentivizing you to be thinner, not, not like it's, it's encouraging you to be thinner, not purposefully, but like pa passively, right? Through the process of capitalism, which is really weird because like, aren't like uber eats and delivery apps currently like booming right now aren't like 
very high calorie foods like really killing it right now like I, these people are so quick to realize like capitalism makes people thin but capitalism also makes people very very fat liking yourself because the environment makes a lot of money off of or our society makes a lot of money off of you hating yourself because then you'll buy the lip fillers and the hair dye and the um yeah that's true but like what do you want there to like how do we fix that like how exactly do you fix that do you do realize that like lip fillers hair dye all the things that you're listing makeup have been in human like circles for like hundreds of thousands of years right you do realize this is not something new now granted like they might not be as accessible as they were nowadays like obviously but that doesn't change obviously you know what i'm talking about like lip fillers weren't a thing but you know what i'm talking about there are ways to make your lips look filler or fuller and makeup existed for a really long time yes i understand that it may have had like lead in it or something like that but you know what i'm talking about so like how do you want us to like fix these processes and are they even something that we can fix at all is this even an issue to make is this even an issue to want to make yourself look a particular type of way you know what I'm saying? Like some activities can accentuate your body in a particular type of way that you could do organically and other things you just can't. Like for instance, I have no lips. So the only way that I would be able to make my lips more versatile, more domesticated is if I did get lip fillers. But obviously I'm never gonna do that shit because like I don't really give a fuck about my lips to begin with. But um, yes, there's something to chase for. We really model ourselves off of other human beings because like what else are we gonna model ourselves off of? I don't understand exactly where she's going with this, but it seems like a stupid argument. It's a lot of money off of you hating yourself because then you'll buy the... It's like, I don't believe that you're hating yourself. Like, I think it's such a reductive way of looking at it. Like, you look at Kim Kardashian and you see that she's double cheeked up and you go, man, my cheeks aren't cheeked up like that. And then you think that you hate yourself. I don't think so. I think most people are just admiring another person's character traits and thinking that they could maybe do that but maybe they can't do it in the same way that that person did it so they go outside their like sure i don't think that over uses of plastic surgery are good a lot of people that get plastic surgery nowadays are in their earlier years and they end up looking like they're perpetually 30 or 40 for the rest of their fucking lives and it's really really crazy i agree but do you just not want those to be options like what is the alternative lip fillers and the hair dye and the makeup i mean like we're making we're not none of us are immune to it right yeah i don't think it i don't think it means you hate yourself um so when it could mean you hate yourself but it's not a direct thing of like you hating yourself we're not none of us are immune to it right um so when we start to realize that no matter how mon many books we read or podcasts we listen to that the system doesn't change or the that diet culture doesn't change or the individual doesn't change until the system changes you it's it's really important to be careful to go down this like rabbit hole of systemic issues because like i do agree that systemic issues exist and that there are times and places where people can make changes and we have made changes right definitely through the last like 200 years we made a lot of changes especially in the western western world right got rid of slavery women can vote black people can vote we have like all this great healthcare systems we have all this like food and stuff like that we made a lot of great strides but I think it's like very, very interesting when these people tend to uh, externalize a lot of their problems because when I hear somebody say some stuff like this, where they go, it's the systems in place, it's society that tells us that we're not good enough, it's society that tells us that we need to stay thin or it's diet culture or whatever the fuck it is. I do agree to a certain to a certain extent that that is there, but these people have a tendency of putting all of that, all of those problems that they have onto those. And what that does is that some of the problems that you're putting onto this societal issue can be addressed. Most of them, by the way, could probably be addressed by you making your own decisions and changing your life for the better. And I think that's awesome. Like people should be able to make their own decisions and do things that improve their lives. It's just very, very, very terrible to sit there and take your responsibilities and put them off on somebody or an entity that may or may not even acknowledge you to having those problems right and it's like somebody that has like a drug addiction telling you like oh the reason i have a drug addiction is because drugs you know are easy to get and like they give me these drugs or whatever the fuck like i agree it there might be some issues there but ultimately like you need to be the one that makes these decisions to get yourself out of it like you can't you can't keep externalizing your issues over and over and over again 
And you probably have a few people in your life today that have these issues. Like, I know I have friends that are like, man, the cops, dude, they're always keeping a black man down, dog. I hate it, bro. And then you ask them, like, can you give me some examples of, like, when a cop did this to you? Like, I don't know. I've had tons of experience where cops have been very disgusting, bad fucking people. Like, I live in fucking Massachusetts, right? Tons of these fucking cops nowadays are fucking terrible, disgusting people, right? That don't do shit. Or, like, they'll tell you to stop recording when you're sitting on a fucking sidewalk and you're not doing shit. Like, it's terrible fucking cops. But I agree. Like, you know, sometimes there are systemic issues. And like I said earlier, there are issues with systemic. And I'm not even one of these people. I'm not one of these people that will tell you that systemic issues need to be, like, purposely written down in the law. Sometimes it could just be, like, Sometimes it could just be something that says in the law, but the downstream effect of that is it negatively affects a large bracket of a minority or a group of people that could be determined to be systemic, right? But a lot of people that I know will sit there and tell you that it's like the government's fault or society's fault or somebody else's fault. When in reality, it's like, bro, you're fat. You know, the reason why you have no money is because you consistently spend all your money on weed. And they'll tell you, well, it's not my fault because the weed is so cheap or the weed shops always make it like they always give me deductions and deals and stuff like that. Like I got to otherwise, like, what am I going to, you know, like a lot of people will do that shit. And sometimes it could be okay to do that. Like we all pro procrastinate or we all like try to make other issues. We, we all try to make our own issues, not our issues, but it's really, really important sometimes to look inward and see what you can do to adjust it. But oftentimes when I see what these people are doing, they like to go, oh, it's society's issue. And then they'll say that it's like a big issue and they'll go, this is a tough thing to like recognize. It's really not. It's a very easy thing to recognize. And it's really, really, really um, easy for them to just continuously put all their problems on that. It's a really hard thing to look inward and see what you can do to solve your problems instead of like throwing it onto like another group of people or society in general. The system doesn't change or the, that diet culture doesn't change or the individual doesn't change until the system changes. If the system never changes and then thus from that you draw that the individual cannot change because the system doesn't change, that means that there can be no change. Because what you're asking for is a fundamental reconstruction of the groundwork, the infrastructure of how society works. So you'll never change because that's never going to happen. It's just a, it's an implausible thing to occur. Now, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's very easy to Put all your responsibilities on everyone else, but all this is going to do is encourage people to just continue to be fat or just live their unhealthy lifestyle for, I guess, the entire extent of their lives, which it's, I guess, like, it's encouraging laziness, right? It's, it's, it's perfectly fine to understand that you're just like, look, if you want to be fat, be fat. Go ahead, be fat. But if you're going to sit there and say there's no other course of action because society is doing this to me, therefore I cannot change, that's wrong. And that's a really, really terrible, reductive way of looking at shit. So, no, you can change. No, 100%, you can make adjustments to your lifestyle if you want to. If you want to become healthier, if you want to go to the gym, you want to walk more, you want to become more robust in the body structure that you have and not just outward and big and girth, then yes, you can 100% lose weight through diet exercise calorie deficits calories in and out understanding nutrition this stuff is all stuff that you have access to now if you want to sit there and be one of these people super pessimistic and go well it's society it's the government it's this it's this it's this it's never you you're never going to succeed because you're always having somebody hold you back and now there might be scenarios where things are holding you back but that's not an excuse to not make changes where you can make them yourself Try to at least take some accountability for some things in your life instead of just putting it all on like a phantom being. Or the, that diet culture doesn't change or the individual doesn't change until the system changes. Diet culture is like a dark cloud that exists over all of us and controls what we do and how we feel about ourselves. This is, uh, this is a very bad way of looking at it, dude. It, it's, just too, it's just too easy for these people to put all their responsibilities on everybody else, man. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really sick of it too because... If they did take some accountability, and the reason why they have to say this is because they don't want to change. And if they didn't want to, if there was in a way for them to change, it would be that, that they can take accountability for themselves. But they have to put it on somebody else so they can never change. So it's really, really sad to say that. Like, if you want to stay fat, stay fat. Just don't lie to people at, to try to make it seem like you're doing the right thing as a consequence of being fat. That's not the case. You're fat because you're eating too much. That's just what it is, plain and simple. But... She has to say this, and the people in these spaces have to say that shit, because otherwise, 
their entire like ideology it just collapses in on itself like that submarine down in the fucking of the middle of the ocean that was trying to explore the titanic it's like that it just implodes so she has to say this hogwash she has to say this bullshit otherwise her entire ideology is just gone this over all of us and control and it's it, it these people are like in the same spew of like anti-vaxxers like these are literally the anti-vaxxers of the fat community what we do and how we feel about ourselves and like really listen to the language dude it's not it's literally nothing about how they can change themselves how they can make themselves more accompanied for society how they because like it's very hard to make society contour to you but it's very easy to contour yourself to society because it's your own decision it's something you can do and society is almost never going to change And if it does it takes a very long time for that to occur so it's a very, very daunting task to sit there and say, we need to change the structure of society. But it's a, it's like a super good thing to just look at, look at yourself and go, what can I do to make myself better? So like, for instance, if you have trouble walking upstairs, is the solution installing way more elevators and way more escalators? Maybe. Or could the solution be lose weight so that way you can walk up those stairs without being out of breath? You know what I'm talking about? Is this solution, you know, is that I have a I have a hard time fitting in chairs. Therefore, we need to make everything like lazy boys and like ginormous exercise chairs. Or could we just lose weight so we could fit into chairs and not be uncomfortable in like 90% of chairs already? You understand? Like these things are very, very simple things that you can take accountability for instead of blaming society for them altogether. So the individual issue is now collective because... If you, if you, sure. I mean, if you have enough individual issues, sure, you can make up collective issues, but it's just like, it's, it's a dumb way of looking at it because a lot of those issues you're talking about could be alleviated by yourself. Because the collective needs to fix the issue for everything to get better. And it's never going to get better because the collective will not, and most people do not see this as an issue. Therefore, you're going to continuously be fat for the rest of your life and always blame it on somebody else. It's never going to be an issue on your part. It's always going to be somebody else's problem. We have to collectively decide that we no longer want to hate ourselves and spend all our money trying to fix all of these made up problems. What are the made up problems though? Uh, collectively, we have to push against these systems that have caused harm to everybody. Stairs. <laughs> It's causing harm to everybody. When you walk up those stairs and you, 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 your calf muscles and, and your quads start feeling a little bit of pain, they hurting you, dude. The stairs are the real problem, dude. They are the arch enemy of our society. Get rid of stairs. Hashtag get rid of scares. Get rid of stairs, right? That's what we're saying here. From a fat body to a small body, but in different levels. And, and also we can kind of see. I think she's actually talking about stairs there. That's actually, I think she's actually talking about stairs. A fat body to a small body, but in different levels. And. And also we can kind of see how that changes based on intersections of race and gender and sexual identity and all, all the things in between. Because you got to throw them in because uh, if you don't, otherwise you, your, your organization doesn't have value. You have to throw in intersexuality. So like, for instance, if you don't, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like intersectionality is basically like if you had one group that's suffering from a problem, you can lump in other groups that are probably suffering from that same problem. So like, for instance, you're black, so you're probably suffering from racism, but hold up, you're a woman too, so that means you're probably su suffering from like misogyny and sexism, but well, hold up now, we're not done yet. You're probably trans too, which means you're suffering from transphobia. So now you're having all these issues that are all intersexual. Like you're the in the middle and you're just getting all these things that are just hitting you all at once because you're all these different minorities. That's what inter it took me a while to even understand what that shit was because it's such a really, really, really weird way of looking at it. But that's basically what it means. It's, it's a terrible way of looking at it, but it is what it is. In an era where it's dominated by who is more of a victim, it's like a dick comparing competition on who has the biggest dick of discrimination. Like, I am more oppressed than you. Therefore, you must feel more sad for me than anybody else. Like, it's, it's such a weird way that we have organized ourselves in society, but it's where we're at. And sexual identity and all, all the things in between. Because if fat, if we can identify that fat people are being treated poorly because they're in a fat body. I would just really love what they mean by being treated poorly. Is it really stairs? Is it really lack of elevators? Is it really like we cannot operate on you because we literally might kill you with this anesthesia? Is it literally that? Or is it like actual problems? Like I, I would very much need to know what they mean by this. We can very easily, easily extrapolate that other people are also being treated really poorly based on different identities and intersections. So no, we cannot have individual liberation and individual healing 
unless we engage in a collective one. Basically, like, there's nothing I could do. Like, it, you know, it's not something I can fix myself. Therefore, we need other people to come in and actually solve my problems for me because I'm never going to look at my problems as problems because they are not my problems and they're your problems. Therefore, you have to help me fix my problems, but I'm never going to say that it's a problem. So you need to actually do it for me, which is really, really fucked up. But it's the way these people think. Calories in, calories out is one of the biggest and widespread lies out there. Weight loss. Well... I think that's the definitive way somebody can lose weight because like that's the understanding where you are metabolically speaking understand how many calories your body needs in order to sustain itself and then deducting that based off of that amount deducting a little bit based off that amount is the definitive way to lose weight so that'd be like somebody saying like the only oh drinking liquids is the biggest lie on how to sustain hydration it's just like what are you talking about, dude? How how in the world can you even try to defend this claim? Such a crazy, crazy, crazy claim. Curious, what advice would you give someone who wants to lose weight? Uh, I, I don't think this person's actually going to give good advice, but the, the, the best advice would be calories in, calories out. Understand where your calories are, how many you're eating in a day, and reduce. Improve redox potential and of your metro somebody help me here and grow it its numbers as well as fixing your lipotin resistance like okay look i think that there are a lot of people that wanted wanted to get into the nitty gritty like the macronutrients and stuff like that and understanding like oh am i getting enough nutrients here am i getting like hydration there like i'm you know people that really hyper focus on it like the people that focus on like i'm not gonna eat any soy i'm gonna you know i'm talking about like these really really weird diets and focusing like mid maxing like really getting to the 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 deep meat of dieting doesn't help most people because it's very jarring or like very very like overwhelming um, to understand any of this stuff because it's like very, very, it's very hard for most people to even understand what calories are. Like most people have no idea what calories are. So if you're saying things like, oh, understand like soy, understanding like sunlight and things such as like, like all this stuff. Um, it's just, no, like nobody's doing that shit. Like you're, you're getting lost in the weeds when like, there's a big picture here, which is calories in calories out. That should be the number one thing. Lipitin resistance, best way, sunlight all spectrum without sunglasses and fps yeah this person's on some different shit like at this point i'm not like anything past this point i'm just like whatever this person is saying some pure bullshit specifically specifically focus on near infrared light in the morning and evening hydrate properly reduce nnemf get more electrons going into your body saturated fats glycogen b1 remove seed oils from for some time, limit carbohydrates and sugar. Easy. After that, you can start exercising as you see. So, like, this stuff is all okay. I don't know about the, like, the first, like, you know, I don't even know what an N -N 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 -E -M -F is. I'm guessing that's, like, Wi-Fi signals or something like that. Because there are a lot of people that do think that that stuff's, like, negatively affecting you. Or, like, the people that say, like, oh, don't, like, look at your phone past 10 o'clock because your eyes are going to recognize it as sunlight. Therefore, you shouldn't be doing it. I don't know if any of that shit's fucking true, dude. I've never seen that shit actually, like, really be true. So, I don't know. But if you know anything about that, you can let me down below down below. Like, a lot of this stuff, like, seed oils or, like, soy and things such and so forth, like you know, suck me off, dude. Like nobody's fucking looking at that shit realistically. Like if you want to eat seeds and you want to eat soy and you're still losing weight, that's very possible. And if you think that it's going to like lower your testosterone from eating like a ton of soy, it's not, you would need to eat like a, like a fucking a ton of it to e even get anywhere close to it. If that was the case, then like bodybuilders would be sucking guys off to try to get the testosterone out of the guy's nutsack like it doesn't work like that so you're gonna need like your fucking your digestive tract your digestive tract really like de de decomposes or sorry decompensates a lot of the stuff that you put in there it just like breaks it down to a very fundamental degree so that's the reason why when guys are like taking testosterone or like taking drugs in order to become bigger stronger men they're not orally ingesting it i mean there are a few drugs that are designed for that but most of the time what are they doing they're injecting it into their butt cheeks so i guess like if you really cared about that stuff rub some soy on your butthole i don't fucking know but the point i'm making here is like this is just like very very new this is like this is some like 
out of the ordinary outside the box information whereas most people calories in calories out will apply to 99.9% .9 of people. The woman on the plane next to my brother told him as we were disembarking that she was glad she was seated next to him on this flight because the last few flights she had been seated next to people who were larger and she was uncomfortable sitting next to them because it violated her personal space and they were difficult to sit next to because they encroached on her seat. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, if you've ever been in a, in a seated position or you've sat next to people or even stand next to people, it is not a good thing to be standing next to somebody that is a larger person because most of the time they're uh, they're taking up a lot of their space and they're taking up a lot of your space too. Especially if you have arranged seating, you're going to have to tolerate that. Especially if the, the seats are not movable. So it's definitely not something I want to do. And you know what? I've taken a few planes in my life. I know that I've sat next to people and it was okay for me. I was sitting next to larger men and I had no problem at all. I'm a smaller person in general, so I have like no issue most of the time. But um, definitely I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have sat next to very, very big people in places where they couldn't move. Um, and it was very uncomfortable for them. So I could see where this person is coming from. Definitely. Dip I mean, this person is being very, very generous on the way that they're describing this. Like, you know, difficult to sit next to is a very weird way of saying like they were fat as fuck and their gut was on my shoulder. You know, that's what I'm hearing here. Um, difficult to sit next to because they were encroached on her seat. And I hate with my whole heart how normalized this mindset has become because it's so inherently dehumanizing. Um, I don't know what you mean by dehumanizing, dude. This person just doesn't want to sit next to somebody that's larger because they want their own personal space for the seat that they paid for in the same way that that other person is paying for their seat and getting a little bit more of the other person's seat. Like, do you not see that that is an issue? Like, you don't understand that that's going to be a problem for that person? People with larger bodies, fat people, disabled people with greater space needs, nobody's personal space is less valuable than another's. Okay, so if you if you think that nobody's personal space is less valuable than another's, then you should be totally fine with this person saying that they don't want their personal space to be encroached on. What the fuck? What is he? What are you even talking about, dude? You couldn't even draw the connection that you're literally debunking your own claim by saying this woman is in the wrong by saying that she didn't want to be encroached on, and then the next sentence literally saying that nobody's space is, <laughs> dude. It's literally like the next sentence, dude. You're literally debunking your own fucking thing. Okay, whatever, dude. Nobody's nobody's personal space is less valuable than another's. It's not their fault that the person next to you on that airplane seat weren't designed for their body. It just depends. Like if that person is missing legs or they're a very tall individual or like there are a bunch of nuances or like gray area in those particular areas where I wouldn't be upset. Like if somebody was like, for instance, an older person and they had to sit next to me or they needed more space or they need a little bit more like, you know, uh, uh, um, what's what I'm looking for? Slack. Like I wouldn't have a problem with that. Like I'm totally fine with being on public transportation and standing up for an older person or a pregnant woman or a woman with a child like I don't care like that's fine for me personally and I think most people can probably resonate with that like most people are totally fine with standing up when people need those spaces but it's like to, to compare that to somebody that's very overweight and sit there and say like oh it's not their fault that they weigh 350 pounds or 400 pounds and like they only take up they take up more than one slot then why the fuck are you paying for just one slot? If you know you take up more than just one, then you need to pay for the second one if you want that extra seat. Why should I have to pay, pick up the price? It, though it may not be economical, like in the sense of like I'm not picking up the economic cost, uh, I'm picking up the cost in another way, which is also not something I want to do. Like I don't want to pay more money or I don't want to pay the same amount of money for less room. That's crazy. And you yourself automatically agree with that by saying like, oh, yeah, like nobody's space is like this is less valuable than another. So like therefore you should agree that if I don't want to sit next to a fat person, you should be OK with that. Like that's that's crazy and by the way it's in it's a very very crazy claim to say that somebody that's very fat uh is the same as somebody that's disabled or somebody that's like missing portions of their body like that's a crazy ass thing like don't get me wrong there are fat people that are disabled because they're fat but like you do know that there's nuance to that how uncomfortable do you think it is to feel an armrest digging into your thigh and know that you're physically incapable of avoiding physical contact with the people next to you i know that I know that the armrest argument is like a big one in these communities, right? Because like it is, you know, for me, I don't have a problem because I have a lot of gap between my uh, armrests. But for fat people, I guess like when they sit down, it would be digging into them because they have a lot more stomachs area because they're bigger and they need that extra space. But 
armrests are like really important for people that are older or like people that need the support to get up that their legs can no longer like accommodate for. They're going to need that extra lift. So when you say things like we need to get rid of armrests or like armrests are not good for fat people, that's fine to say. But you're also being ignorant in the fact that the armrests are there for a reason. Like people need them to lift off predominantly older people or people that are disabled. So even in the argument that you're looking for, you are you are still negating a, a literal wider array of people. Older people make up a bigger degree of people, right? A bigger, wider o orientation of people compared to fat people, right? We, we can all agree on that. So, like, even if you want to make that claim, it still doesn't make sense. If you're trying to protect people that are things that they cannot change, like being older, right? Like, you can't change being older. You know that. So, I don't know, man. The armrests are pretty fucking important. Anyway. Um, digging into your, the incapable of avoiding physical contact with the people next to you. You know, it's really crazy though. It's like, if you're fat and you can't avoid physical contact with the people next to you, you do realize that's your fault, right? Like, it's not my fault that you're touching my shoulder with your stomach. Like it, that's your fault. Um, to know exactly how judged you are just for existing. The size of a person's body is not something they can control. That's <laughs> sure. I mean, there are some I'm, I'm just sick of giving these people so much, so much. It, in this particular scenario of fatness, it's not true. You can totally control the size of your body in a very general degree. Like if you weigh 450 and you don't, th you don't think you can control the size of your body, how the fuck did you get to 450? That's a crazy ass argument, dude. Does it, how does it work on one end, but it doesn't work on the other? That doesn't make any sense. You obviously can control your body size you may not be able to control like the bone structure or like how the fuck your body is shaped fundamentally but you can control how much calories you consume and then as a byproduct of that you become thinner or fatter so if you're okay with people becoming fatter and you're recognizing that people become larger how the fuck can you not recognize that people can become smaller as, as well they can control it um they are just entitled and that's it's just crazy when I hear entitled when this this entire like this entire paragraph here is literally entitlement and they are just in, entitled to a person's space as you are in the case of cramped, often inaccessible airplane seat. You may be none of you may be none at all. Get over yourself and show some fucking compassion to the people that take up more space than you. Why should I have to take, if anything, they should show some compassion for me. Like, I have to put up with their terrible, disgusting body size that I didn't have anything to do with. Like, I'm just minding my own business, dude. I live in my healthy life, and this person is encroaching on my, on my gut. Like, this person got their whole stomach on my shoulder and shit because they wanted to gain more weight. And now I have to deal with that. Like, what about me? Like, I feel like that's completely backwards. Now, why should I have to give them some, some compassion when I'm the one having to deal with the problems? that they're they put upon themselves like oh, that doesn't make any sense at all but anyway guys we're gonna end the video here if you enjoyed today's video i'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously even just a simple like will help me grow in the algorithm so if you could do that for me i'd appreciate that tremendously and i will suck your toes anyway um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by tipping in headband because I have a headband here and it's nice to play with. It's, you know, it's very elastically, elasticy. If there's like a headband emoji, then you can put that down there too. Um, and let me know how your day is going because I'm very interested in you and I'm very interested in how you live your life because you're such an interesting person. You smell so good today too, by the way. What is that aroma that you have on? Is that your natural musk? Because if it is, I love it. It smells so great. It's so incredibly lubricant and it smells like you. And I love that. I love that about you. You have your own aroma. And to be honest, if, uh... If you were the rain, I would let it all over my skin. I would let you rain all over me if you were clouds or whatever because your scent is indistinguishable from divinity itself. You smell so amazing. You are so amazing. I love, care, and really, really like you. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, you can by checking the links in the description of this video or the links in my channel. And they're all hyperlinks, so you can go ahead and click on any of them. They'll take you directly to any of the links, which is my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff is going to be linked down below in the description of my channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.